it's been a bit. I've been busy with work lately, so I haven't had much time or energy to write scripts for more serious videos. Still, that doesn't mean I haven't had any time for creativity, and I decided I wanted to share some of the things that I've been working on in a way that's not necessarily what I typically do around here, in something called a concept art show, where I'll be showing my concept art. It's not exactly a big puzzle. I should say, if you've been like, well, this channel is just above being too nerdy for my tastes, otherwise I'd leave, this video may not be for you. So, surprising nobody that's familiar with my channel, at least, I like the works written by J.R.R. Tolkien. I really like The Hobbit. It's one of the first books I've ever heard, and one of my favorite fantasy novellas. If I had one minor critique, other than I suppose the lack of gender representation for what was supposedly a story for children, it would be that the twelve non-Thorin dwarves of Thorin's company aren't really fully developed. Now, not all of them, Balin, Bomber, and Dory actually do get fleshed out, but the other nine only have a few distinguishing traits, most of which they share with their immediate family, or describe the color of their hood or their musical instrument of choice. Or both. Admittedly, as this is a children's story told to mainly entertain, not every character needs to be dynamic. I know most of these names are just Prosetta references, and you could probably cut back half the cast and not miss anything, so it's hardly a big problem. Still, when adaptations seeking to stretch a kid's book into a more traditional action story still fail to give each character something unique while adding in other new characters to fill roles that could have easily been filled by one of the less defined dwarves, it seems a little silly to me. And no, information published online detailing which one of Jackson's dwarves did hard time does not count. Neither does making one a walking gag about traumatic brain injuries. So, being myself, I decided to sketch 12 designs for these 12 dwarves, using what little information there is to lay the groundwork, and making some bridges to other points of lore and inspiration along the way to complete the rest. First is Keely and Feely. These two are repeatedly described as the youngest, and in multiple parts are much more positive than the older dwarves, so I wanted to make sure I gave them a youthful energy. Feely also gets a little more description of physical appearance, having a big nose, and cutting off most of his beard out of necessity when it gets caught in a web. Feely also gets to have a hook on a rope in Mirkwood, so I gave him a rope dart as a weapon idea. Keeley isn't nearly as described, but overall I wanted both of them to be notably less experienced, but much more energetic and enthusiastic than the other ten designs. Our only three dwarves that are not of Durin's descent are Biffer, Bofer, and Bomber, and they were probably my favorite to draw. Now, not being a part of Durin's line definitely means not related to a Durin, but I think you could also take it to mean not related to any Durin, which would also mean these three could be from a different kindred of dwarves. I went with Firebeards, as they did live in Khazad-dûm, which is where these three are from, and that also allows for a fun beard color to go with fire. Biffer is a character that is never referred to with gendered pronouns or relational terms. While everyone else is a brother or a son, Biffer is only described as a cousin. I think it could be cool to portray Biffer as a lady, but true to the lore, she would disguise this fact while traveling abroad, and would be hard to tell from a gentleman to outsiders. Now, self-proclaimed fans have freaked out over a canonically combat-seeking Galadriel seeking combat, so I am sure they would short out if they saw a character which, though not stated to be, was likely conceptualized as male portrayed as female. But hey, I'm not actually making a licensed adaptation. Biffer is also described as a mad fighter, so I gave her two knives to wield in furious flurries. In Tolkien's unfinished rewrite of The Hobbit, Bofur, along with his brother and his cousin, were going to be Thorin's bodyguards, and Bofur is tasked with protecting the ponies towards the end of their journey, so I wanted him to have a very somber guard appearance. As for Bomber, there was much more to go off of for him. It was a lot of fun to draw a heavier character with a lot of strength, as he's described. I went with a Rungu as a weapon to match his strength, but slower pace. It would take a lot to swing one of these, but... All of that power, though it would take time to pull out, would eventually be much stronger. And his drum, to add some levity. I also would be interested in exploring his potential clairvoyance were I to write an adaptation, as he does seem to be able to see the future, or perhaps across space after his swim in the Dark River. Ori, Dori, and Nori are our next set of brothers, and I actually will give Jackson's Hobbit the slightest bit of credit here in having Ori be the company's scribe. Given his identification as the quickest writer in Balin's company in Moria, I like the idea that he'd be the one to keep the records of events over the course of the story. Ori also doesn't have any solo lines in the book, so I think he would be a good choice to feature Iglishmik. Tolkien invented a dwarven sign language, Iglishmik. Ori would be nonverbal, but still communicate with the other twelve using this language. 
Dory is like Bomber in that he's well-developed, being the strongest and one of the most compassionate dwarves. For some reason, his strength is rarely conveyed in adaptations. I mean, this isn't a bad design like some, but does this really screen the strongest in the same company that has this guy? Nori's one defining moment is when he's judgmental to his brother, so I went with a gruffer appearance. I was pleased with the result. Oin and Gloin are mostly mentioned with regards to starting fires, so I gave them a fire knife and a fire arrow, respectively. I know fire knives aren't actually weapons, but it's fantasy, and if Jackson is allowed to make a barrel a weapon, I should be allowed to make a fire knife a weapon. Gloin also seems to be the information master in the Fellowship of the Ring, so I gave him a darker, more shadowy set of clothes to reflect a kind of spy-like personality. Lastly, we have Dwalin and Balin. Balin is, of course, the oldest member save Thorin. He's incredibly good with Bilbo, and he's also described as the lookout, so I gave him a monocle to increase his range of vision. Dwalin is also the one who lives the longest out of the company, except perhaps save Bilbo, since we don't really know when he died but he's also supposed to be Balin's brother, so I wanted him to look old-ish, but healthy and strong. Alright, and that is my take on Thorne's company. Like I said, I just wanted to post something, and if this gets a really negative response, I probably won't do this again. But I thought it might be nice to share something that I did that brought me some fun. Well, until next time, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.